Jesus. Let's take a cigarette. Fuck it. Check. Check. Talk radio, 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 radio. Pop radio. Two men and a cat. Two men and a cat. Two what? men and a cat. Two men and a cat. Uh, in a junior one bedroom, about to get to it. No, it's the real music when you're coming with fluid. Yeah, man. <laughs> if this was a freestyle show, we would not be, we would not be top of this shit. So there's this lawmaker from here, right? Okay. He's got Lawrence. These, all, all their names don't even matter. Okay. Really? This guy comes out, some talking head, right? Yeah. It's on the Senate, Congress, what have you? One of them, okay. right? Sure. <laughs> This guy comes out and says, black and brown communities, if you look at the weapons they have, they are not licensed. Oh, okay, okay. They are better armed than the police officers who are supposed to be controlling them. Okay. They have firearms galore. Black and brown communities, black communities in particular, have gangs. And the (laughs) gangs have to be stopped. Arizona. This is okay, this is a recent, okay. Alright, okay. Initial thoughts. Just the language, right? That language of the the gangs and they have guns and they're monsters, right? That's what immediately sticks out to me. Like, okay, I know what this is. We know this is that classic uh, drug uh, drug war language of tough on crime. And, you know what I'm saying? Yes. And that's just like the continuation of that. So that's what sticks out. I'm like, okay, boom. I know where dude's coming from. But then, alright. Trying to, try to get into the details of it. Like, alright. Uh, the initial logical fallacy part of like Mo he says all of most of the guns the black and brown community quote unquote has are unregistered. Then he's like, Yeah, the numbers are crazy of what they have. I'm like, wait, what is this uh what are you what are you basing this off of? It's like you're saying this it's crazy of all these different types of guns. We don't we don't, we don't know what they have because they're not registered. I'm just like but that's the thing, right? He's not it's not talking about like actual factual information. He's just talking about like uh this idea of people are beasts or whatever. And I'm like, okay, yeah, people do have guns, right? There are a lot. There are, I think there are a lot of people that do have guns, and they do make it a point to protect themselves because they, other, they understand what they're up against, whether it's police or just other things in their environment. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, that's a real thing. But uh, his perspective. But then, oh, but then the line. What do you say? Uh, they're 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 better armed than the police that are supposed to be. I think he said controlling them, right? That was the. That was the quote. I'm like, I would hope so. I hope so, right? But, but I don't think they actually are, because the people were really, she wouldn't be, she wouldn't be like it is. You know what I mean? Right. She would be, she would be a different situation. Like, so that's I'm like, damn, like that would be tight if that was true. If the people were better armed, well enough to the people, the cops that are supposed to be controlling them, quote unquote. But and knowing that, but knowing that, right? Him, him putting that out. That's just a way to ramp up the violence that's already being experienced by the black and brown communities, because who should be arming themselves we should be arming ourselves you know what i'm saying because of the incessant violence but the reason that black people are in the streets has to do with the lives they're forced to lead in this country and they're forced to lead these lives by the indifference and the um apathy and a certain kind of ignorance a very willful ignorance on the part of their co-citizens. No idea, motherfucker. Everybody knows. (laughs) (laughs) Well, in the form of criminal charges or otherwise, this is the first thing that must be done to start negotiation. Far and of the prison's 27 demands, this is the only bail the arrested guards can have from the announcement of the Black Panther Party. Incarceration. That's all. Let's go. Anything else? Yep. On the tail end of that, 
some of the people that were talking about it and the and the journalism around it, the critic seems to generally be that uh, police aren't supposed to be uh, controlling those communities. That was the line. What do you think about that? that? I think that's uh, <laughs> okay. Police are supposed to be controlling because that's the, the the point of the police. You know what I'm saying? But people want to believe that the police are this uh, benevolent force that's supposed to be protecting, because that's the rhetoric. But I think uh, that's not what they're in place to be to, to be doing. So that's why there's no police for them within whatever we call a community, right? But people, but but people are going to point that out in this situation because they see that as like the easy flashpoint to be like, no, there's language that says the police is supposed to be doing something else so we can call that out, opposed to being like, this whole shit is foul. We've complained to the police about the police and nothing's been done. We've complained to magistrates about magistrates and nothing's been done. We've complained to judges about judges and nothing's been done. Now it's time to do something ourselves. That statement was made at the mangrove demonstration and represents the essence of black people's experience in Britain. That since we've come here, we've suffered a long train of abuses by the police with the active knowledge and support of the British state. And those abuses have been able to be carried out under the pretext that, quote, black people are criminals, sponsors, and prostitutes. That is a myth that has been created about us. That is a statement that was made by one police officer who gave evidence in the mangrove case. Now, the demonstration that black people made against the harassment of the mangrove restaurant, the subsequent resistance in the court, is an active explosion of that myth. The access is so important and so pivotal. And people I know, the people that I do know from, that are from down there, wanted it to come. For sure, for sure. I heard the example of a small business going under. My thought had the same problem. Okay. We, this is in the late 80s, Phoenix. He, he bought a spot to have a tank of Rhea construction open, and his business was totally demolished. You know, it comes down to access, because small business owners, a lot of time, have more money, right? And some people don't have that capital, and sure. those people are trying to access jobs in the city centers. Yes. So that's right. where the that's where the access point comes from. Because eventually it's gonna possibly push them out, right? See see what this is about about the how we know you come over to our country and, and buy up our land too. You know, it works both ways. I, I don't I don't see how you can have this rallies and everything against the white man. This is America, you know. I mean this is, safe in this is not America, this is Polynesia. Our country was stolen. That's one of your problems. You're ignorant, woefully ignorant. Um, I do, I am, I am very active against Japanese ownership of our land. I have testified repeatedly at various commissions and at, at the legislature in opposition to any foreigner owning Hawaiian land. But you, Paula, need to learn about Hawaiian history and about where you are. And that attitude that you have is the same attitude that Joey Carter has. You think you are in America. You are not in America. You are in a colony that is in Polynesia that was forcibly taken. Just as, I might add, all of Eastern Europe was forcibly taken by the Soviet Union, which Americans think is a very, very bad place. The bad, bad Soviet Union. Well, the bad, bad United States of America took Puerto Rico, it took Alaska, it stole Indian land, it took Hawaii, it took Guam, it took Micronesia, Balao, and you had better learn that history. That's how I think about the, all the developments of the condos and everything, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's trying to change the population of who's there anyway, so it's like, is the bringing of Valero in preparation for that, or is it, is it gonna allow the people that are there to like build foundation, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, but I think that displacement of, of the lower classes and specifically brown and black people has always happened in this city and has already happened to such an extreme extent. A lot of people were already pushed out For sure. as renters and this neighborhood has already been generally co-opted yeah. by uh, white in its proximity to domination yeah. and attempted domination, whether it be economically, physically, Spatially, spatially, everything. I feel it. I feel it. That's that definition of whiteness. I feel. It. But we can acquiesce spaces of wealth that other people who are more displaced, even in the city, can't, because of language barriers, uh, because of uh, skin color, because of a proximity to class or the visuality of class. That part, right. That part. The way you look and the way you come off. 
yeah and yeah. and people break off in those ways and there's some people that are socially exiled in certain uh in certain establishments and as downtown grows and as asu grows and banner grows mm -hmm. this city it is just getting eaten up Self-medication probably came from all that hatred Young brown boys and girls thinking we ain't shit Jaded getting faded by the time I was 14 Coping with fake shit Feeling like love and hate is the same shit Cause I'm from where companies run countries Conversations roll my patience I'm like when dummies speak Suck your teeth, I don't give a funk Step correct and get stunk. tell me what you want I ain't got no more time actually contemplating this blunt And baby hitting my line, trying to get in the twine Get so deep she feel it in her mind Probably why she reciting rhymes Told her don't mess with no swine Cause someone's father gon' get some time Told her the universe realign Meaning karma is a magic trick To pop up on you quick Run you for your chips and dip And leave you just to reminisce Step on the plugs, crack your mother, slip a disc In the midst of the madness, where y'all was stuck in poor lids Shit, who this young boy walking like he does? Shit, who this young boy talking all that? Shit, who this young boy all up on his Shit, who this young boy walking like he does? Shit, who this young boy talking all that? Shit, who this young boy all up on his the oral tradition is really the essence of our culture because uh, it's our memory as a people, it's our ceremony, it's our history and for Mohawk people and I think for indigenous people generally in Canada and the United States and I, I think it's the same here in Mexico as well. It was more of a collaborative uh, process of sharing stories and so the, the storytelling and the oral culture and the listening part of it was uh, very, very important to what it meant to be indigenous. I think that's it's probably the reason we're still here. Nazi pig motherfucker, you dumb motherfuckers ever pull a gun on my kid? You motherfuckers are going to be in for it. Y'all are some piece of shit, bottom feet, good for nothing, low down, Nazi ass, fascist pig. Fuck it for a mouth, fuck Phoenix police, fuck all y'all motherfuckers. I hope y'all all die and burn in fucking hell, Black Liberation Army, of which he is a member, and remnants of the Weather Underground, stole $1.6 million from a Brinks truck in Nanua, New York. In the process, he and his comrades killed two police officers and a guard. One of the police officers was black. You didn't care about those people that you killed. No, I didn't care that much about them. You know? Everybody who got shot that day was armed. Everybody who was shot that day woke up that morning realization that they might get shot that day. We'll have to shoot some man that day. In his first television interview, Wasey Balagoon discussed his dream of a black homeland, the Republic of New Africa, that would be created from five southern states, Mississippi, South Carolina, Georgia, Alabama, and Louisiana. He gave up long ago on integration, calling the U.S. an evil empire, racist to the core. Black gold. Astronaut or black Miss America or black president is not the point. We're talking about 40 million people. And we you know if 40 million people examine the conditions that the masses of us are, are under, they will have to come to the conclusion that we are going around.